that's a perfect way to start the day. So since I can't watch most of my hockey games live the night that they're happening, I always go to YouTube and look at the highlight reels that NHL posts on YouTube the next morning. And any morning that the Avalanche win is a good morning, but when they beat the Detroit Red Wings, it's even better. If you're not a hockey fan or you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google greatest sports rivalry of all time and it will take you directly to the Red Wings Avalanche rivalry from like the late 1990s, early 2000s, and you will quickly see what I mean. Now, before I get into today's video, I got a little bit of business to do. If you watched my last video, I had a little trivia question at the end, and I've got to give the answer to that because most people got it wrong. I was surprised. I had one person that got it right. Most people didn't know what it was, or if they guessed, they were wrong. So let me reveal to you guys what the border around this photograph, I'll show it to you again right here. Let me reveal what that border was created from. It was created from a Type 55 Polaroid. Now I've got, I'm mad at myself because I could not find my original Type 55 Polaroids to show you, but let me do a little quick explanation. This is a Polaroid, and back in the film days when we were shooting 4x5 negatives on those big view cameras with the bellows in the middle, you would have a what was called a Polaroid back. This Polaroid would, would go in there, you would expose it just like a photograph, and then you would pull these two pieces of paper apart, and it would reveal after, you know, the chemicals go through it and it processes for a minute, minute and a half, you would end up with a Polaroid. This is a finished Polaroid. This happens to be a Type 54 Polaroid, black and white Polaroid. This is a Type 59, it was a color Polaroid. And there was such a thing as a Type 55. And what it did was gave a black and white print as well as a negative. Now I will show you my image of the negative with a clear inside. There's no photograph on this particular image and that's what I can't find. I can't find one of those negatives. I know they're here in my studio somewhere. I can't find them, but whatever. What I did then was I took the borders of that negative, scanned it into the computer, and then I could put it on a print digitally in Photoshop, and that's where the border came from. Now, on to today's video, which I'm really kind of excited for because it's just a goofy, fun idea that I had. I didn't really think about it until just recently, and then I thought, yeah, that would be kind of fun if I could make kind of a neat video about this subject, and that is my first digital camera. Now, I told you guys a while back that I sold off all my Canon gear that I was using for years and I went to the Fuji system, but I did keep one Canon camera and the only reason I kept it was because it was my first digital camera. It really is of no value to sell, so I hung on to it and that is a Canon D30. This also happens to be Canon's very first digital camera that they put out on the market, or at least their first digital camera that was super successful and people were able to afford it. Now let me give you a little history lesson just to kind of put things in perspective. This is a Canon film camera. This is one that we had before the world went digital. What Canon did was they came out, basically took the same body, it's very similar, but instead of using film in the back of the camera, they put a digital chip in the back of the camera body and you were able to use the same lenses, the same accessories, and any system that you already had going in the film era easily transferred over to the digital era. Now I actually looked this up when this camera came out. Let me read my notes here somewhere. May of the year 2000 is when this first came out. I actually didn't buy it until probably 2002, 2003, somewhere in there. Brand new, this camera cost $3,000 just for the body. Um, when I bought it, I bought it from a friend used because he had gone up to the next camera body, whatever was next, and I paid him $1,000. This camera is a 3.1 megapixel camera. Now, at the time, that was a pretty big deal. Most of the cameras that followed it were 6 megapixels, and then over the years, they just went up from there. Now, at the time, everybody was switching over from film to digital. Some of the big concerns were is digital going to be quality enough for what I need it to do? And at three megapixels, 
uh, you know. Now a three megapixel camera coming straight out of the camera will give you an image that's basically five inches by seven inches at 300 pixels per square inch. It's not a big file by any means. However, depending on the type of work you did, was it enough? Now at the time I was doing a lot of wedding shooting, I was doing some portrait stuff, and at the most I was creating eight by 10 inch prints to go in bride and groom's wedding albums. So to enlarge from a five by seven to an eight by 10 was very doable. So that three megapixels met the needs of a lot of things that I needed it to do. One big problem that photographers had with these smaller sensors were if you did a big group shot of a lot of people, say you were at an event and you had to photograph 20 or 30 people in one shot, they became very, very small on that sensor. And so there was not a lot of information creating each face. So in a particular case like that, these cameras didn't produce the quality that we needed. The other concern that a lot of photographers had back in the early 2000s was just the whole digital thing was new and you know it was pushed people out of their comfort zones and they, they were used to film and they knew what they could do with film. So a lot of people were hesitant to make the switch over. For me, however, I was super excited even in the late 1990s when digital was kind of coming out and there were a few cameras out there on the market. I was excited because I was tired of paying for film. I kind of did an assessment when I was shooting a lot of weddings that every time I took a photograph with film, I was spending about a dollar. By the time I bought the film, processed the film, and made a proof print, I was spending about a dollar. So that got pretty expensive pretty quickly. And the cost of these digital cameras, even though you know a three megapixel camera costs $3,000, I could easily make that up by not having to buy film anymore. Now, when these cameras first came out, they take a CF card, a compact flash card, which I actually somewhat prefer over an SD card, not because they work better. I'm sure the technology is better with an SD card. I just like the size of these. The SD cards are small, and one little thing that's kind of interesting with the compact flash cards, this camera came with a 16 megapixel compact flash card, and my friend, when he sold me the camera, actually sent it to me, and it's here somewhere. It's probably in the same box with those Type 55 negatives but 16 megapixels wouldn't even hold one image from a camera today. So when I switched over to digital, to me, by and large, it was just an absolute switch. I didn't do film and digital for any length of time. I just switched to digital. Everything I did went through this digital camera, even though it was only three megapixel, it met the needs of what I did. And I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of images that I shot professionally with the D30. And I'll just run them here as I'm talking because I found quite a few images that I shot in those days. Now I eventually upgraded to a 20D, which was probably three generations later. I think it was an eight megapixel. Then I went from that to a 5D, which was 12, and they used that for a long, long time. But the D30, and just to kind of throw this out there too, some of you might be thinking, I didn't think the 30D was the first camera. Canon did kind of a weird thing. They came out with the D30, which is this three megapixel camera. And then several generations later, they, they go to 10D, 20D, 30D. So don't confuse a 30D with a D30. So as you can see, I shot a lot of weddings. I shot commercial work. I did a lot of different things with this camera. And even though it only had three focusing points, it was only three megapixels. It focused rather slow. It did a very nice job. The colors were beautiful. It was sharp. Now it didn't do very well at high ISOs. It didn't do very well with long exposures. The noise got rather crazy rather quickly and you had to stay at 100 ISO and you had to light things and expose things correctly. But I think as you look at these photographs you'll see it did a really nice job. As I was pulling out some of these photographs so I could show you what I had done with this camera all those years ago, I realized that there's a chunk of them that I still show on my website to this day, meaning they're probably some of my favorite photographs that I've done, at, at least portfolio worthy, to continue to show people and get work. Now, of course, in the year 2000, when this camera came out, it did not have video capabilities, which was not a concern for most photographers. For me personally, I wasn't doing any video work back in those days, so it wasn't something that I was looking for. 
Now, of course, in order to make this video of some interest, we've got to do a photo shoot with this camera. And that is exactly what I'm going to do here in the studio. I thought it would be appropriate to do something in the studio since it's still kind of wintry looking. I mean, spring is starting to come out here in the south, but it's still kind of bare trees and kind of gray skies. So we're going to do something in the studio. I got an idea. I'm going to go set that up right now. Look at, look at this tiny little screen. Here is a quarter, just to give you an idea. Not that much bigger than a quarter. Okay guys, one thing I want to show you with a camera this old is the delays. When I take the photo, there is a delay as it writes to the card. It'll say busy inside. I mean, when I'm looking through the viewfinder, I can see it'll say busy as it writes, but watch, watch this. See how it said busy there for a second? It has to write if you go to view it too quickly, um, which is not the end of the world in a sh shoot like this, but I just wanted to point out the delay that, you know, it's not, fa it's not a fast camera by any means. It's slow, methodical, kind of like a, kind of like a film camera. So I've got this shot set up with the strobes and it's working quite well. Um, I like the results of what we got even straight out of the camera. But one of the drawbacks to this camera is longer exposures and higher ISOs. You can't really get off 100 ISO without sacrificing a lot. So I'm gonna switch out the strobes for a continuous light, which will force me to do um, a longer exposure and or higher ISOs. And I wanna show you what happens uh, with this old technology. Okay, I have put a continuous light up there. It's not super bright by any means. I'm at two seconds at F8 at the moment, 100 ISO. Let's do this. There's that delay again. Okay, and one of the problems that I have with that is I'm letting a lot of ambient light come through my background that I didn't have before. So it's gonna be a little bit different of a shot. So now let's go to a little bit faster shutter speed, but a higher ISO. Okay, 1600 ISO got me to a 10th of a second still at f8 looks very similar in terms of exposure so let's plug those into the computer and see what they look like watch this as well guys this was always kind of weird i thought so you come over here to uh, my compact flash card and you come into this folder and then the D30, for some reason, always put them into separate folders like this. And I, I never really paid attention if you could adjust that or not. I know you can do that with, you know, cameras today. You can set up the folders certain ways. But if you look, there's only three shots in that folder and two shots in that folder. And they always had this THM file as well. 
And if you also notice, the Canon RAW files in those days were a CRW. Either the next camera that came out had the CR2s, or I, I, don't, I don't know, somewhere along the line it came out to a CR2, but CRWs were the original Canon RAW files. Okay guys, so let me show you real quick. When it comes to high ISO or longer exposures, this camera just didn't uh, really cut the mustard. This first shot here is the one that I shot at two seconds. And if you look at it, it's not horrible. I mean, there is definitely some noise that's starting to get in, come in here. Um, it's, not, it's not bad. Two seconds, F8, 100 ISO is where we were at here. Now look at when I jumped to 1600. It got incredibly noisy. I'll just go from one to the other. Crazy noisy. And not only noisy, it got to a point where it's like soft. It doesn't even look like it's in focus anymore. This, The focus here is not great, great. Here, it just gets noisy and soft and um, yeah, we'll zoom in just a little bit farther, but yeah, you can see, um, I don't think it's out of focus. Like I missed the focus. The whole thing just looks, sh looks soft. And I wouldn't even call the noise really attractive noise. Not, not to me at least, but you know, turn it black and white and you can hide anything and call it art, right? Now here is the shot that I did with strobes. I think for starters, the lighting is a little bit better, but if I come in here a little tighter, you can see at three megapixels, you know, it's not as crystal clear as you would get with a camera that you would have today that had 20, 30 megapixels or more. Um, but if you come through here at ISO 100, uh, it's not bad. <laughs> For such a small little camera, it's uh, it's got some decent little uh, quality, um, and this obviously, like I said, better lighting than the ambient light. So I'm going to process this one. I'm always a little bit off when it comes to being level. It seems like so we'll do that. I don't know what else to do to that. That's that's not hateful. I do think the colors represented a little weird. It's a little on the glowy side when it comes to the orchids themselves. We'll process this one, make it our final image. So that was kind of a fun photo shoot. I think it's pretty obvious that this camera did well when you lit things and exposed things properly, which in the process of doing all this, I realized how far the industry has kind of come. We're all about big megapixel cameras. We're all about huge dynamic range that a digital camera can accomplish when really we've kind of gotten away from just doing things properly. Here was the first generation three megapixel simple, simple digital camera. But if you did everything properly as a photographer, if you lit things correctly, if you exposed it correctly, you set the white balance correctly, you could do amazing things with it. And a lot of professionals used this camera when it first came out, including myself, obviously. If there's anything you learned from this video, I think it's kind of getting back to the basics of being a photographer and not completely relying on the camera to do the work for you, but to have the technical know-how how to take photos properly. And even with this old camera, you can get amazing results. All right, guys, so that was kind of an interesting, I think it was kind of a fun project, kind of a fun look back on how the digital world kind of transitioned and how it did it for me personally, and kind of a fun shot in the process. So if you guys have any comments, I'd love to hear what you have to think. Tell me what your first digital camera was. Where did you jump in? Were you a film shooter that switched over to digital or did you just pick up, well, most of you guys that got the Type 55 Polaroid question wrong probably jumped in in the digital age, didn't you? Yeah, well, you learned something about Polaroid. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks as always for watching. Thanks for subscribing and giving me a thumbs up if you would. I would greatly appreciate that as well. And I will see you guys in the next video, which is coming very soon. Go Abs!